In a previous lesson, you made a distinction between a form and a quiz. What exactly is the difference between a form and a quiz? Sure, so Microsoft Forms can be used to build a form, a quiz, or a poll now also. Let's take a look at the differences. Hmm. So we're here in My Microsoft Forms, and you've already seen a regular form. We did that with that birthday list we created earlier. Notice that next to New Form, I've got a drop-down arrow, and I have another option for New Quiz. If I choose to do a quiz, it's almost the same as a form. There's just a couple of differences. So let's call this Sample Quiz. And again, we have the option to add a description. We can add an image. We'll skip those for now. We can add questions just like we do for a form. Let's say we want to add a multiple choice question. So let's say this is a geography quiz, and our question is, what's the capital of South Carolina? So we'll put in some choices. So as we add each option, notice we have a couple of new things out to the side. One is this chat bubble. This is going to give feedback for anybody who chooses that answer. And then the other is the check mark to identify that this is the correct answer. So in this case, with these four choices, Columbia is the correct answer. So I want to click the check mark next to Columbia. It marks that as the correct answer. If I want to, I can go in and give feedback for each of these responses. So, so teachers like to give constructive feedback for each wrong answer and for the right answers too. So we can do that with the message bubble. But we don't have to, it's optional. Now notice we also have an option to give points. So a quiz is going to be made up of a series of questions, but the questions don't have to be weighted equally. You do that with points. So for example, we could call this a 10-point question. We have the same options we had with a form where we can have multiple answers, we can make it required. We have some other choices here as far as drop down and shuffle and that sort of thing. But let's move on and add a different type of question. So let's add a text question. What's the capital of Georgia? Now in this case, it's going to be a text answer, so we have to give it a text response for what's going to be correct. Notice down here we have an option to add correct answers. So Atlanta is the correct answer, but maybe we don't want to count off for misspelling, so we might want to put a few different versions in there. So in this case, again, we can change the points. Maybe for some reason the Georgia question is worth more, so we can make this a 20-point question and so on. So we can continue adding questions and we have all of our question types available the same as what we had with Microsoft Forms but most of these are not graded. They're not scored like the text questions and the multiple choice questions are. So most of the time if this is an actual quiz you're going to want to use text questions and multiple choice questions when you care about what's right and what's wrong. Oh, okay. Alright, so let's just take the two questions that we have here for now. Let's assume that we want to share these out with our people and we'll let them answer the question. So I'm going to copy this link Let's pretend that we are one of the students. And we're going to choose Asheville for the first question. And we'll type Atlanta for the second question. And we'll submit. Now, we've submitted our answers. We can view our results. And we can see that we got the first one wrong. And notice it gave us that feedback on the answer. And we can also see that we got the second one correct. So we received 20 out of 30 possible points based on the weighting that we gave to each question. Now, as an instructor, if I go back to my forms page, if I click over to my responses tab, this looks very much like the responses we saw for the form, but I do have a couple of other options. One is I can review the answers. If somebody answered a text question, like if for the Atlanta question, maybe they answered Hot Lana or something, it's not technically correct by the answers that we gave the system, but we want to change it and say, okay, that one really is good. We can do that by using review answers. Once we've graded all of the students' work, we can choose Post Scores. And this will allow us to post all the scores for all the students in a place where everyone can view them. So if we had a list of students, we would choose this to select them all and choose Post Scores. And then anybody who visits the form link will be able to see the scores for all the students. Hmm. Okay. So that's quizzes, mostly the same as a form, just with some scoring features. Yeah, it would be useful for any time you're teaching something in the office. Exactly. Now let's look at polls. Polls are something you can add to a conversation in Microsoft Outlook or Microsoft Teams. Let's look at Microsoft Teams. All right. So here we are in Microsoft Teams. Now this is your Microsoft Teams and you're in a team called Special Teams Project. This is the general channel for that team. So you can start a conversation. Of course you can type. You can add all the other features we've talked about in other conversations. One of the icons you may see at the bottom is for Microsoft Forms. If you don't see this icon, click on the three-dot menu and choose More Apps and search for Microsoft Forms. It's free to add. So if I click on Microsoft Forms, this is creating a poll question for us. So we do it one question at a time, and these are multiple choice questions. So what's a good question we could ask in this conversation? 
Is everybody ready for the meeting? Notice just like in forms, it gave us a couple of options. We can choose to add all, yes and no. Let's add a third one and say, what meeting? Useful. So we have a couple of other options here. We can keep the responses anonymous. If this is something sensitive, we want to make sure everybody you know, stays as private. We also have the option to share results automatically. So after everybody votes, they see the votes of everybody else in the poll. We'll leave those with the default for now. And I'm going to choose Save. And so this has created the poll. It hasn't yet sent the poll. So from here, I could edit. I could give my own answer. And once I'm ready, once I'm sure that's the poll I want to send, I'll choose Send. Oh, okay, and it actually added the form to the message, but it didn't send my hey everyone message. Right, the hey everyone, your conversation is still separate, even though you clicked on the forms as part of that. Hmm. So now we can give our answer. We'll say yes, because we are part of everyone, and we'll submit our vote. And notice the poll response automatically updated. 100% of the people so far are ready for the big meeting. Good. Pretty good, small sample size, but still pretty good. So that's how you can use a poll in any channel or any chat conversation inside Microsoft Teams. You can also do the same thing inside a Teams meeting. So for example, we have a meeting scheduled today. We have a staff meeting. If I want to, I can add a poll to this staff meeting. So the best way to do it is to have the meeting on your schedule, click on the meeting, choose chat with participants. So here we're seeing a preview of what the chat's going to look like inside the staff meeting. Um, we could send forms from here, but that'll do the same as what we saw before. It'll post the poll in the chat or the conversation. Mm -hmm. If we want to have some polls ready to use during our meeting, we want to use the tab at the top. And we'll add a Microsoft Forms tab. And so now we have a new tab at the top called Polls, and we have an option to create a new poll. We can do a multiple choice poll or a multiple choice quiz. Again, the difference is scoring. Mm -hmm. So let's choose the poll. So I've created this multiple choice question that I'd like to ask during our meeting. Uh, just like forms before, I have all my other options down here at the bottom. I can also choose to allow others to co-author. So if I want other people in the meeting to be able to edit this question, maybe add their own options. If I have co-hosts or co-presenters, I can do that. When I choose save, this is now added to, as a draft poll under my Polls tab, but I can also choose to create another one. So you may want to have different polls at different stages during your meeting, of course. So again, I'll do a multiple choice. We'll just do something silly in this case, and we'll choose Save. So now I have two questions queued up in drafts for when our meeting starts. So let's go ahead and start our meeting and see how we can use these. I'm going to choose Join. And even though it's ahead of schedule, I'm going to ask some of the other staff members to join as well. So our meeting started, and we're all muted just to make sure there's no audio issues here in the studio. Mm -hmm. But so if during the meeting we're sharing our screen, we're having our conversations, we're using whiteboards, all the normal things you would do in a meeting, and we decide we want to throw out a question using our poll feature, notice at the top now I have a polls button. I can choose that, and it gives me a choice of those two questions I had created in drafts. So I'll take my first one, and I'll choose Launch. And so now for everybody on the meeting, that question is going to pop up in the middle of the screen where they pretty much have to answer it. I can give them a certain amount of time. We'll go ahead and answer it for ourselves. Now we're seeing the vote in real time. So two-thirds of us chose engineering, one-third chose marketing. Apparently nobody cares about sales in this group. Once we're done with the form, we can choose the done or the X to close it and go back to our meeting. Mm. Notice the results stay over here in our polls. They'll also be available in our chat as well. Got it. Now, I'm not limited to just the questions we set up in advance, though. I can scroll up here to the top, and I can create a new question on the fly. So here, just like before, I can create a multiple choice poll or a multiple choice quiz, and that'll load into the drafts window, and I can launch that whenever I'm ready. Hmm. I see. So who has the ability in the meeting to create and launch questions? So, really good question. By default, actually any attendees except for guests will be allowed to create and launch polls. Guests won't be allowed to see the question pop up the way we do on, in front of the screen. It's a permission issue with Microsoft Forms. But they will see the question pop up in their chat and they can answer it there. Hmm. Well, it seems like if nothing else, polls are a good way to make sure everybody's paying attention during the meeting. 
Yeah, and not just paying attention, but asking relevant questions during a meeting is a great way to make sure everybody's feeling engaged, not falling asleep, and making sure that they're feeling like they're contributing towards the outcome. Hmm.